Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome back to another video, and recently there's been a lot of talk about Freely, the new service that's going to be the evolution of Freeview, there's been a lot of talk of traditional TV going away, being replaced by internet-only telly, well... If you were any skeptic about what's going on here, prepare to be even more skeptical with what's to come. This article recently came out saying, end of free view? The UK is not ready for online only TV, according to the report. Now, if you'd have just said that to me, I probably could have told you that at least over the next five years. As it currently stands, you know, as of 2024, the United Kingdom is not ready for online only television. There are huge swaths of the country that are without high speed internet, and there are even parts of the country that struggle with basic internet at all. We've covered this on numerous videos, but you know, if you were to turn off uh, traditional television or DTT, digital terrestrial television, if you were to turn that off now, there would be millions of people left without an option of watching traditional telly. Millions of them. And you know, we've heard figures, haven't we? Oh, by 2030, there'll be, you know, this will all be sorted. Well, this article claims it's not going to be 2030, it's going to be a lot later than that. Let's have a look. It says, with both public service and commercial broadcasters pushing to ditch traditional terrestrial TV service as they want to reduce distribution costs and monetize viewers online, a new report says the UK's internet networks are not ready to become the sole method of receiving TV. A report by consultancy firm EY predicts the gap in broadband uptake by 2040. It predicts 18% of homes will still be without a high-speed broadband internet connection unless action is taken. 18%! Nearly a fifth! of UK homes without high-speed broadband. Just think about that for a sec. Availability of high-speed internet is not the only barrier. There's the cost of full fiber services. It's a problem for the elderly, the disabled, and low-income households. The campaign group Broadcast 2040 Plus says, report highlights need to retain traditional broadcast. So already, that's a lot of things to take in there. We're gonna break each of these down as we go through the article. I just wanna say this article, as ever, has come from RxTV. I can't stress enough, guys, this is a very valuable website, rxtvinfo.com. They produce lots of fascinating articles about the state of TV or just media in general. General, go and support them, go and support their journalists because they're doing a cracking job. It says TV broadcasters can't wait to ditch traditional digital terrestrial TV, that's a mouthful in it, DTT, marketed as Freeview, and digital satellite services. The main public service broadcasters, so the BBC, ITV, Channel 4 and 5, have joined together to create streaming replacement freely. Sky and Virgin Media have launched their own streaming-based platforms. We've talked about Freely at length at this point on the channel. I've done numerous videos on it. You can go and check those out. But that is sort of the state of where the public service broadcasters want to move to. Moving to streaming reduces the cost for broadcasters as they no longer have to pay for expensive terrestrial TV distribution and they can dispense of satellite transponder contracts. Streaming allows them to acquire user data and analytics, which can be used to monetize services or sold to third parties. So again, in terms of the broadcasters, moving to streaming actually works out quite well in their favor it's less expensive they can gather more precise data analytics they can make money by selling that to third parties it's where they want to go and as you, as we know in the last few years especially they've been moving as quick as they can but we have those those barriers in the way which we'll get into but a report from consultancy firm EY says the UK isn't ready to adopt online only TV. It has highlighted barriers that stop broadband internet becoming the universal method of accessing TV. The campaign group Broadcast 2040 Plus says the findings justify the safeguarding of traditional TV services until at least 2040. So, you know that 2030 figure we've been seeing for a long time? This group are saying it should be 10 more years that traditional tele services should be protected for at least uh, another, well, what we are now, another 15 years, if not more. Our report regarding Freely last week also prompted readers to get in touch with concerns over homes without high-speed internet connections who feel they'll get a worse service in the coming years. It is a big problem that will be broken down here. So what is the problem? The report predicts that 5.5 million UK premises, roughly 18% of homes, will still be without access to high-speed broadband by 2040. That's despite the government's commitment to 99% broadband covering by 2030. Okay. This thing of, you know, getting uh, full fiber or high speed broadband into every home, no matter which party, political party says that, I'm all for it. I think everyone should have access to decent broadband, particularly high speed broadband. And, you know, this 2030 figure has been touted for a while. We're in 2024 now, six years to go. If they're saying that this prediction that in 20, by 2040, so in another 16 years time, 18% is still going to be without it. That implies that what the government are committing to at the minute is not fast enough. And I really doubt, unless they quite, you know, drop many other major things that need to be focused on, 
that they aren't going to reach 99%, certainly not by 2030. The regions and nations where homes are most likely to be without a high-speed connection by 2040 are as follows. Northern Ireland with 24% of homes. A quarter, a quarter of Northern Irish homes without high-speed internet. It's a big, it's a big percentage. Northeast England at 21%, so just over a fifth. Yorkshire and the Humber at 20%, so again, a fifth of homes in that region without high-speed connection. Northwest England with 19%, Scotland and 19%, and Wales with 19%. What, what do we notice about all those particular regions? What is it? Oh yes, none of them are in the south. Make of that what you will. The reasons for the lack of connection include no connection available and cost of service. This, according to the report, will affect the elderly, disabled and low-income viewers. Among elderly users, currently 31% of over 65s don't use the internet at home. And this is a problem that I think isn't being addressed enough by all parties, by the government, by the television companies, by everybody. That proportion, you know, that's nearly a third of over 65s who don't use the internet at home. Yes, the internet has become a big part of all of our lives, certainly in the last 10, 15 years or so. But for the older generation, those who grew up without the internet or, you know, very limited use of it, they can go about their lives without, without needing it. And I know, you know, the argument is, well, they need to adapt just as everyone else does. But, you know, as long as traditional methods of everything, I'm not just talking television, as long as traditional methods exist, why should they have to if they don't want to? I mean, my grandmother is a perfect example, right? She is, let's put it this way, she is over 100 years old. Okay, she is over a century old. She has never had the internet in her home. She has no real desire to use the internet personally. Others sometimes use the internet on her behalf for certain things where traditional services no longer exist and an internet option is the only one available. But where she can, she will not touch the internet. And she has no wish to, no desire to. And there are millions of others, you know, over 65 who are in that same position, exactly that same position. And unless, you know, certain things are done, unless these elderly people are set up with high-speed internet so they can access television, or, you know, you protect traditional television, but how long is that gonna last? The same thing goes with uh, those who are classed as disabled. Some with certain disabilities might not be able to access the internet in the way that they need to. Again, they might rely on other people to do it for them. Their homes might not be equipped with suitable internet. Obviously, I understand, you know, television for those with various disabilities might be very low on that priority list. I get that. But again, it's it's a concern because if they're going to be left in the dark like that, what are they meant to do? And low income households, that's the big one, because again, even though going streaming only or Internet based is great for the broadcasters, it's a lot cheaper for them. It's less expensive. There is still the cost to the viewer. You know, all the talk we've had about freely and, it, you know, free to air television. At the end of the day, in this country, as it stands of 2024, you have to pay a license fee, which is, you know, going up to nearly £170 next year. Now, this, you know, primarily funds the BBC, and I'm all for the BBC being funded. I think the BBC should stay as a publicly funded broadcaster. I don't think the license fee model is perfect. Is it antiquated in many ways? Absolutely. Does there need to be some sort of change or adaptation of it? Yes. That will come in about 2027 when the Royal Charter, which it abides by, is up for renewal or discussion. But um, you have to pay this license fee. Now, you can do that in a number of ways. You can do it all in one. You can do it quarterly, monthly, etc. But it's a cost. And then if we're going internet only, the internet is a cost. There is no internet provider out there that you that is absolutely free. You have to pay for your internet. And, you know, in some cases, your internet usage, depending on the kind of contract that you're on. So those with low, you know, those low income viewers, those low income households, naturally, understandably, there's going to be bigger priorities, you know, food, keeping the, the heating on, electricity, gas, water, if you've got children involved, obviously making sure they're fed, clothed, they have a roof over their head, paying rent, etc. So television will be increasingly low on that list. And But then you say, oh, well, you know, you can just use like data plans on your phone. Yeah, but they, they ain't free either. You know, they're not free. You have to pay for your data. What I think is good that RxTV does in a lot of its articles as well, it provides the context as it says here. At present, BT subsidiary OpenReach has plans to roll out full fiber across more of its network in the next few years. But its current rollout plans still don't cover every telephone exchange area in the country. In some areas, alternative networks aim to connect some areas, but this leaves some users with just one full fiber network to choose from and no viable internet connection from a traditional copper phone line. 
We note that where there is less competition, fiber broadband prices can be substantially more expensive once the initial promotional periods end. The report also highlights the cost of as being a barrier to the elderly, disabled, and low-income households. Some internet providers offer social tariffs, but these may be speed limited. As a result, the connection bandwidth may not be suitable for multiple users streaming content. So again, this is a pretty big game. If there's if there's only one provider in certain areas, not only is that a monopoly in that area, but they can charge whatever price they want because if they haven't got competition, they can jack the prices to whatever and say, well, you know, if you don't pay, you ain't going to have high speed internet unless you move somewhere else. It's just a bit muddy, isn't it? It's a bit muddy for those customers who'll only have one option. And that again will heighten that barrier for those groups that were mentioned, the elderly, disabled, low income households. And again, it mentions social tariffs so that, you know, the elderly, for example, might get certain discounts. But again, this will be speed limited. So the amount of, you know, the strength of the speed of your bandwidth will be, you know, capped maybe at a certain degree. And again, if it's an elderly person living on their own, that might not be too bad. You know, one source of streaming at a certain bandwidth, you know, that might be okay. But again, if you're a family home, a low income family, you know, and you've obviously, you, you know, you've got the television, then you obviously you want to use it for maybe work on your laptop or computer, then you've got kids who want to use it for various things. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't add up, sadly. Broadcast 2040 Plus, which is campaigning to keep TV and radio services on the airwaves, has called on the government to take steps to safeguard broadcasts. At the moment, Freeview Multiplex broadcast licenses are only valid until the end of 2034. The World Radio Communications Conference, held last year, agreed the UK and other European countries could continue to use the frequencies for terrestrial broadcasting, although this position may be reviewed in the 2031 conference. Any resulting changes wouldn't happen until the end of the 2030s. So, okay, we know that Freeview then is guaranteed for at least the next 10 years until 2034. So you're still going to get digital terrestrial television. That will still be a, the primary way in which millions, and I'm not just talking those specific groups that were mentioned, millions of, you know, all kinds of people rely on those multiplexes on Freeview. And they're saying they can keep using these frequencies for terrestrial broadcasting, but when the next conference happens in 2031, things might change, might be reviewed, we'll have to wait until then. But it is reassuring, I guess, to see that any resulting changes aren't going to happen until the end of the 2030s at least. So when I've talked about, oh, will Freeview last until 2030? It seems by now definitely, yes, it will. It might even last till 2040. And again, this group, Broadcast 2040 Plus, is campaigning to keep digital terrestrial television as an option until then, if not beyond then, if necessary. Ofcom is preparing to launch a review of digital terrestrial TV. It has the power to trigger an early termination of those Freeview Multiplex licenses from 2030, giving five years notice. Okay, maybe not as safe as I first thought. So will they do that with all the Freeview Multiplex licenses? I don't know. Again, you'd like to think Ofcom would sell, you know, look at the pace of internet only homes or the amount of homes that are capable of streaming internet only. And if that isn't the majority, then I'd, I'd hope, I'd like to think they're not going to cancel those multiplex licenses unnecessarily early. Regarding universal TV provision in the UK, it says DTT, marketed as Freeview, became the default universal way of accessing free-to-air TV services following the digital switchover, which ran between 2007 and 2012. That's, of course, when all the old analog services were being switched off. All main public service channels are delivered through a network of over 1,100 transmitters, including relays, which reaches 98% of homes. So even DTT, the existing model, does doesn't reach 100% of homes. Well, it is the majority. 98% is pretty much the vast, vast majority. Digital Satellite TV, FreeSat or Sky Satellite, which was launched to Sky Digital, is an alternative way of accessing TV. In some parts of the UK, Satellite is currently the only way to access some free-to-air channels, as Freeview only offers a limited selection of channels from relay transmitters. So again, the service isn't perfect, and FreeSat often bolsters that up a bit, but only for certain areas. We've had a few responses to the report from EY. So this is Colin Brown from the voice of listener and viewer, who says, it is crucial that all citizens in the UK are able to enjoy high quality, informative and diverse programming available on a universal basis. This report indicates very clearly that terrestrial TV and radio will continue to have an essential role for many in our country for a very long time. And yes, I agree with him. Based on the figures that are purported there, there is no way, again, unless the government drops everything else it's working on, there is no way that 99% of homes are going to be covered by high-speed internet and broadband by 2030. No way. Now we have the Citizens Advice Cornwall Communications Officer, Wei Lin Wong, again, my apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong, 
They said, we are concerned about the issues highlighted in the EY report. The disparities between coverage and actual usage underscore a pressing issue that directly impacts the most vulnerable members of our community, including the elderly, disabled, and those in rural areas who make up a large proportion of people who come to see us for help. And then we have one from David Colson, who's a partner at the Economic Advisory at EY, who says the EY study indicates that despite widespread broadband coverage, universal access for all viewers should not be taken for granted. It is crucial those least likely to have high-speed broadband in 2040 continue to have access to television, particularly vulnerable groups such as the elderly, disabled individuals, low-income households, and rural communities. So it seems that all the parties taught, you know, spoken with here are on that wavelength. And I think most people would be on this wavelength as well. I, you know, I totally understand the public service broadcasters reasons for adopting freely as quickly as they are you know all of these virgin sky as well i get why they want to move to this as quickly as possible again it's cheaper it's the way it's going they get more data they can make more money by selling it on etc it all works out for the broadcasters but as things stand at the minute it doesn't quite work out for the viewer again just supplementing that figure you know 5.5 million homes estimated to be without high-speed broadband by 2040 5.5 million of them again nearly a fifth 18 percent, nearly a fifth of UK homes without high-speed broadband by 2040. So, again, how the government thinks it's going to reach 99% by 2030 is a mystery to me. I really don't think that's going to happen. They'd be lucky to get even half of that number at the speed everything's moving at. But that's that's quite, you know, that's an eye-opener for me. The fact that nearly 20% of homes are predicted not to have high-speed broadband by 2040. And you're telling me by then they want to cut off digital terrestrial television? So, you know, say if you live in an area, right, that doesn't have high-speed broadband yet. 2040 comes, you still don't have high-speed broadband. And they turn off the multiplexes, DTT goes away. You basically have no reliable way of watching television. You might have internet, yes, you might be able to stream TV via the internet, but it might not necessarily be in the highest quality possible. It might not be the speediest or most efficient service because you don't have high-speed broadband. If you've got multiple people in the house needing the internet, that's going to create problems. It's just, it's a staggering figure. So whilst, you know, I agree with Freely launching and that Virgin and Sky are doing their thing, I get that. I think introducing these services now isn't a problem. You're getting people in. I just think their uptake, the uptake period for them is going to be a lot slower to start with than, than they may be predicted. But yeah, all of this just points again, like, like this report says, that the UK is just simply not ready for internet-only TV to become the standard. You know, I don't know if other countries are moving in this direction, or I, 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 to my knowledge, I don't think any country has fully, you know, moved to that internet only. Correct me if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, but... You know, the fact that we purport to be one of the leaders in television and innovations in television and all that sort of stuff, yet again, highlighting one of the flaws that the internet services we have or provide for people, it's its just not there. It's not going to be there for 2030. There's doubts, I mean, serious doubts it's going to be there by 2040, which makes me think, unless something radical happens, digital terrestrial television, so Freeview, Etel, you know, the, the way we're consuming it now, or millions are consuming it now, that's going to be around for not just years, but decades, decades to come. But yeah, that's the meat and potatoes of it. But I want to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this. Do you honestly think the UK is ready for internet-only television? Or when do you think it will be ready? Let me know down in the comments below. Or do you agree with this article? Do you think the UK is miles off? from this point let me know all of that in the comments down below if you enjoyed the video please leave a like on it it does help us out and subscribe as well we'd love to have you aboard with us in the meantime thank you for watching the video i've been adam martin for amtv thank you for joining me and i'll see you next time thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show and a special thank you to macra ethan carberry holt bruce stanton globe of reviews Derek chambers sean knock dod khan liam domain trev hughes AJ Mac 200017, Deck KP20, Simon Harrison, and Evan Hart 38 are AMTV staff members.